Hey, in this video, I am covering all things engagement rate, um, what exactly it is and why it's so valuable to your brand and all the brands that you want to work with as an influencer, as well as the best way to calculate yours so that you can include it in all of your pitches to the brands that you wish to work with. So by far, one of the most common things that I hear from influencers within the community is that they believe they need 10,000 followers or 25,000 followers or 75,000 followers in order to start working with brands on paid collaborations. So if you've ever thought the same thing, I'm here to challenge that. The truth is, no, you don't need a ton of followers to land paid brand campaigns. I myself monetized my food blogs Instagram with as little as 500 followers and there are many influencers in the community with less than 10,000 followers that are securing really high paying brand deals regularly. Some with lesser known brands, yes, but also some with brands that you've definitely heard of. So trust me when I say that the brands are out there and are actively searching for nano influencers to work with. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Jay and I'm the creator of 11th Street Studio Influencer Agency. So if you'd like to learn how you can join our influencer community, check out the link below this video to our main website. And if you'd like to learn how you can gain unlimited access to all of our e-courses and webinars and 24 seven support from other influencers and myself within a Q&A forum, check out the link below this video to our membership website. Okay, so now let's chat about your engagement rate. I want to really break it down, including how to best calculate it so that you can really understand why it's so important to not only brand deals, but your growth on social media. And to make things simple, your engagement rate is a metric that represents how many people in your audience engage in some way with your posts. Engagement includes things like likes and comments and shares and saves and swipe ups and, and more. Um, and you can calculate it in one of two ways. A, by dividing your total engagement per post by your total audience, or B, by dividing your total engagement per post by your total impressions per post. Now we're gonna do a deep dive into how to easily calculate it at the end of this video, so make sure you watch until the end. But for now, let's talk about why your engagement rate is one of the key metrics that brands are interested in. And there really are two important reasons. One, it plays an important role in Instagram's algorithm, deciding whether or not your post is shown to more people. And secondly, it can tell a great deal about your post performance, um, which helps brands determine whether or not a partnership would be a smart investment. And as you know, several years ago, Instagram pivoted from showing users posts based on chronological order to using an algorithm to show users posts based on what the algorithm believes each user most wants to see. And that's why so many people talk about algorithms. Instagram has one, TikTok has one, YouTube has one, podcasts have one, and I'm sure that future social media platforms will have one as well. So it's something that you really need to understand and get comfortable with. So to break it down, there are several factors that contribute to the algorithm, including how recently a post was shared and your online relationship with the user who shared it, as well as interest, um, which Instagram calculates based on a user's past behavior and content they've interacted with, and also how often a user opens up Instagram, for example. So if you have high engagement on your previous posts and stories, um, Instagram notices that and is more likely to show your future posts, which means better reach long-term. And if you exchange DMs with users, those users are more likely to see your posts in the future as well. Now, if you're a brand looking at an influencer's profile, the amount of visible engagement on each post might look impressive when you're counting up likes and comments. But it's important for brands to know an influencer's true engagement rate as well, because 100 likes and comments is outstanding for someone with say 100 followers, but not so much for an influencer with say 25,000 followers. And that's why brands ask for more telling metrics 
like your impressions so that they can calculate your engagement rate accurately. So now let's pivot back and chat about how to calculate your engagement rate. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two popular ways. Now, some of you may know that my background is in psychology. So I spent about six years <laughs> studying research and statistics in undergrad and grad school. And I personally believe that engagement should be calculated with impressions in mind rather than reach or total follower count. Um, in my opinion, it's simply more accurate. But if you check online, you may notice that there is some debate around this. So naturally you wanna choose for yourself. And realistically, the way to calculate your engagement rate may change over time. But for now, this is how I recommend calculating your engagement rate. You want to start by adding up all of your post engagement, including comments and likes and shares and clicks and saves, basically any form of users engaging with your content. That's what you're measuring because this is a strong indication of how valuable and relevant your content is to your audience. Next, I want you to divide your total engagement by the total number of impressions or people who have actually seen your post. And on a side note, on Instagram, you can access your post impressions directly below your post by clicking on view insights. Okay, so again, you can calculate your engagement rate using your total follower count as well. However, in my opinion, it is much less accurate. You can do this by dividing your total engagement on a post by your total number of followers. Again, this will tell you your engagement rate based on your entire reach. Now, I personally believe that this is not as accurate as an engagement rate that takes impressions into account because you wanna know how engaging your posts are based on who actually has seen your post, not on who didn't see your post. And to be fair, it is complicated because as your engagement rate increases, Instagram shows your posts to more of your followers. So it is tricky. But to simplify things, if only say 10% of your followers actually see your posts on any given day, then it makes sense to calculate your engagement rate based on total impressions. Again, impressions equal the total number of people in your audience that actually saw your posts. Your reach, on the other hand, equals the total number of unique people who see your content. And in a perfect world, every one of your followers would see every piece of content that you post. Unfortunately, that's not how things work on social media. Not all of your followers will see every single post that you publish. So the main reason why I suggest you choose to calculate it using impressions and not follower count or reach is that you want to know out of the total number of people that saw it, how many actually interacted with it? Not how many people could have potentially seen it and naturally didn't interact with it. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm curious, how do you currently calculate your engagement rate? Are you calculating it by impressions or by reach? Let me know in a comment below. So let's be real, not everyone loves math, myself included. Um, so if you're like me, I totally suggest using analytics tools to calculate your engagement rate for you. Um, if you use websites like Plan or Planoly or Later to schedule out your posts in advance, you can easily access your engagement rate within these websites. And they often show you your engagement rate for each post as well as your overall engagement rate. Just be aware though, that they may not calculate it based on impressions, but by your overall reach. Um, but all in all, these websites can really speed up the process significantly. They'll also tell you info that you can't possibly know just from looking at a post on Instagram or a video you shared on TikTok, um, including the number of impressions that it received or how many people clicked over to your profile after viewing it or to your website, for example. Now, of course, each platform has an in-app analytics tool, most often called Insights. And you can access all of this data on Instagram, for example, by clicking on the menu in the top right corner of the app and then selecting Insights. Um, and you can view all of your TikTok analytics by clicking more data in the bottom right corner of your video or by visiting tiktok.com forward slash analytics on a desktop or laptop browser. 
So once you do this on Instagram, you'll be able to view all of your insights for your profile, including the performance for both engagement and impressions on each individual post. But again, if you want more advanced analytics, you might want to consider using websites like Plan or Planoly or Later to analyze your profile. Now, many analytics tools will offer um, much of the same information, if not more. And some even generate downloadable files for you to share with brands and to keep on file for yourself. So do what works best for you. But my advice is to always stay up to date on your engagement rate because it's something that you need to share with brands whenever you're seeking out collaborations. Also, if you want to improve your engagement rate, I suggest checking out some of my other videos where I share a ton of tips on how to do so. But for now, I suggest focusing on the following. Um, respond to comments frequently. Reply to your DMs consistently. Um, include very specific micro niche hashtags within your posts. Um, and include questions within your captions, as well as write captions that spark conversations. And of course, encourage people to save or share your posts whenever you can. At the end of the day, your engagement rate is an important metric for both you and brands to figure out what performs best on your unique profile with your unique audience. And a high rate tells you that your audience is seeing your content and that they're engaging with it, which is ideal. It's also social proof to others, which can directly impact how other people perceive your brand and content when discovering it for the first time. I talk a lot more about social proof in the e-courses, so make sure to enroll in the members website if you want to learn more about the psychology of influence. Speaking of, I've personally received a lot of testimonials from influencers who've enrolled in the members website saying that they've signed tons of paid campaigns with brands using the pitch templates located in the resource library. And I'd say about 75% of them have less than 10,000 followers, but they're all highlighting their engagement rate within their pitches. So keep that in mind if you're actively seeking brand collapse. I can't stress enough that these days, more and more brands are looking at influencers' engagement rates over follower count. So my advice is to calculate it frequently so that it's always current and charge accordingly. Because like I say in the e-courses all the time, the best advertising is that of a trusted friend or word of mouth, okay? So regardless of your audience, if your followers are engaging with your posts, they see you as someone they can trust meaning that they're very likely to take your advice in the future. And that's why you see influencers with small audiences consistently partnering with brands. They have high engagement rates, making it incredibly easy for them to secure sponsored posts with the right outreach and pitch strategy. Now, obviously I teach all of this in the e-courses, but for now, just keep in mind that you need to highlight your engagement rate on your media kit and within your pitches so that brands deeply understand the value a partnership with you can provide them. So if you take anything away from this video at all, it's that engagement drives conversions and that's what brands are looking for. In fact, many brands report that they prefer to pay, for example, 10 nano or 10 micro influencers for a campaign rather than pay one mega influencer. Why? The nano and micro influencers, A, charge less, and B, have highly engaged audiences that easily convert to sales. Sadly, mega influencers can't really produce the same results. So think of it this way. If a brand's marketing budget is $25,000 and they wanna reach, say, 500,000 people, they could pay 10 micro influencers, each with really high engagement, $2,500 each or they can pay one mega influencer with low engagement the entire budget. Typically, brands choose the first option since the ROI is higher with the nano and micro influencers. Now, this is more often the case with brands that have the goal of making sales. If their goal is to gain awareness or to increase sentiment, then they may wanna go with one mega influencer since their reach far outweighs that of the nano and micro influencers. So at the end of the day, you always want to confirm the brand's goal with the campaign before signing any contracts. Okay, so just remember, as follower rate increases, engagement tends to decrease and higher engagement 
typically equals higher conversions. Now, what does this mean for you? If you fall in the nano or micro influencer category, brand outreach should be fairly simple. If your engagement rate is high or even just average, you provide a ton of value to brands. So like I mentioned earlier, I highly recommend that you highlight your engagement rate within your pitch to brands so that you really stand out and capture the brand's interest right away. Now on a side note, brands sometimes tell me that they receive email pitches from influencers without any mention of their engagement rate. And they often fail to mention their engagement rate in their media kit or one sheet as well. Or they send over an outdated engagement rate that simply does not highlight them in the best way possible, which unfortunately causes many brands to immediately lose interest. Hopefully you haven't done this. Um, so I just wanna mention that if you want to learn more about media kits, make sure to check out the video that I published listing exactly what you need to include in your media kit and the design websites that you can use to quickly make one or update your current one. I'll link to it at the end of this video. And listen, I get it. Creating content for a blog or YouTube or Instagram or TikTok takes a lot of time and creativity. However, spending at least one hour a week doing some networking and brand outreach can truly open a lot of doors and opportunities for you. So I highly suggest it. Whenever you can, always be networking with brands and pitching them. Practice really does make perfect. Also, remember that even though you may not hear back from a brand right away, don't stress. Often they're filing away your info for a later date when their budget increases and they have products to promote. So keep up the outreach and by all means include your engagement rate in your media kit and all of your pitches because it will pay off. I promise you that. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, my goal is always to release one new video each week on all things influencer marketing, social psychology for social media, and social media growth. And like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't already, check out the links to our main website below this video to learn how you can join our influencer community and also check out the link to our members website where you can join as a member to gain unlimited access to all of our e-courses webinars and 24 7 support within the community from other influencers and myself in the q a form okay thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the next video